Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a problem from the Canada Math Olympiad 2016 problem number three. As just to try this nice number theory problem out for a minimum of say 20 minutes, ideally an hour to an hour and a half, not more than three hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 10 minutes. And now without further ado, let's begin. So what do we do in this problem? So we have a polynomial. We need final polynomials P of X with integer coefficients such that p of p of n plus n is a prime number for infinitely many integers n. Okay, now in polynomials, the first sort of order of business is, maybe this is a thing we most often do in polynomials. There's two things. One is to look at maybe the graph of this thing right here. Like, what is this like? If the polynomial p of x looks something like this, what does p of p of x plus x look like? How does that change? With respect to this right because this is now if p of x is of degree say k then this is of the then this in turn inside here is of degree k to the power of k makes it the degree of k plus k it's the degree of 2k if i'm not mistaken yeah because when you have x to the k no it's to the degree k times k actually yeah so this is to the degree k squared so with that we know now that we can't, right, because if I have x to the third, and then p of x to the third is x to the ninth. That's of degree 3 times 3. So here, what we can see is that, can we analyze that in any way, shape, or form? And initially, the idea is we use that when it's not a polynomial with integer coefficients. If we can use it when it's a polynomial with integer coefficients, but it's we use a lot, a lot more often when we have a polynomial with coefficients which are real numbers. Right? But with integer coefficients, and especially because we have a prime number here, we're not looking about the growth of the polynomial or its zeros. There's no discussion about that here in any way, shape, or form. So it makes sense to use the rule that, not the rule, I mean, rule of thumb for polynomials, which is that in any polynomial with integer coefficients, p of x, we have a minus b divides p of a minus p of b for any integers a and b. That are, of course, different, right? Otherwise, you'd have 0 divides 0. It's not a fun thing. So even though you could say that by definition, but let's ignore it. For every a different than b, we have this. So, and why is this true? Well, if p of x is equal to, say, the sum of x to the i and some let's say a i from i equals zero till some n say it's of degree n then we will have p of a minus p of b will be equal to the sum of till n from i equals zero a i to a to the power of i minus b to the power of i and this thing right here is equal to the sum till n i equals zero a i of a minus b times the sum till i minus 1 from j is equal to 0, a to the power of j, b to the power of i minus 1 minus j. Right, that's what this is equal to, and then we can just like get a minus b outside. That's really all there is to it. So that's why this is true. And this fact in here is incredibly useful when you're dealing with polynomials because you can set A and B to be anything. And with this in mind, I invite you to pause. If you didn't know this was a very cool thing, pause now for the next 10 minutes and try to push the problem further. And here's the next step. So the thing we're going to be doing now is, okay, we have P of P of N plus N is a prime. So I want to set A to be P of p of n plus n and I'm going to have some minus some p of b and I'm going to have this is divisible by what it's going to be divisible by p of n plus n minus b now what do I want to set b to mind you if I want to set b to something nice here I can set b to be equal to say n if b is equal to n then I have p of n divides p of p of n plus n minus 4b is equal to n, p of n. And now this is very cool because I can get rid of 
P of n, and I have P of n divides P of P of n plus n for every integer n. And now this thing, what does this imply? This is also, why is this incredibly useful? I invite you to pause for five minutes and ask yourself, why is this useful if you think it's useful? And the answer is, it's useful because our condition is that this is a prime number for infinitely many n. So now that's actually, that can be very useful here. Because if this is a prime number, then that tells us that p of n is either that prime number minus that prime number, a 1 or a minus 1. But furthermore, this is always true. And we can actually write this as p of p of n plus n is equal to p of n times q of n for some polynomial q. Because this here, this fact here is always true, we can actually write this as, as this. Now, why is this true? I'm going to make actually a video on polynomials. Well, it's just like the introduction for why can you say if, if say, this divides, if a polynomial, if this divides this, which you can look at as another polynomial, a polynomial uh, p of n divides a polynomial r of n for infinitely many n. Actually, for oh, if I have infinite, do I need infinitely many or all? I'm not sure. I'm going to check that out. But if this is true, then this is true. Then there exists a polynomial q with integer coefficients polynomial such that this is true. And now with this, I invite you to pause for another 10 to 20 minutes and try to push the problem further. Because here's the next step. So with this in mind, we have this is a prime for infinitely many n. All right. So one of two things is going to be true infinitely often. Either this is 1 or minus 1 for infinitely many n. Now, if p of n is going to equal to 1 or minus 1 for infinitely many n, what does that mean? I invite you to pause for five minutes. Think about that. What does that mean? If this is 1 or minus 1 infinitely often, then that means that, what? That means that the polynomial, say this was, if it's 1 or minus 1 infinitely often, then it's 1 of 2, 1 of these two infinitely often. Like it's infinitely often 1 or it's infinitely often minus 1. See, it's infinitely often 1. If we get a sense of this, let's r of x be equal to then p of x minus 1. Then r of x, because p of x is going to be 1 infinitely often, that means r of x has an infinite number of zeros. Now, if r of x has an infinite number of zeros, what does that tell you? That means it's a constant. That means r of x is identically equal to zero. Because the thing we know for polynomials, if this is of degree k, if this polynomial is of degree k, then we know that it has, at most, k real zeros. It, it has exactly k complex zeros, but at most k real zeros. So, with that in mind, if you have infinitely many zeros, you know that the polynomial is a constant. And then this is going to be 1. So that means that p of x is actually 1, but then this isn't true. And similarly, if it's minus 1, you'll just add, you'll have this be p of x, you'll have r of x, p of x plus 1. You'll have r of x is 0. Infinitely often, that means r of x is identically 0. Then p of x is going to be equal to identically minus 1 for every x. It's a constant polynomial then, and then the problem statement doesn't hold true. So, in this case, p of n is 1 or minus 1. That can only hold finitely many times. Every other time, which means we have infinitely many times, we will have p of n is equal to p of p of n plus n, or we will have p of n is equal to negative p of p of n, plus n. One of these two will happen infinitely often, right? Because if this is a prime and this is a product of two numbers, 
then either it's the case that this thing right here is going to be equal to this or it's going to be negative this right because it's not going to be one or negative one infinitely like infinitely often this is going to equal this actually the absolute value of this is going to be equal to the absolute value of this infinitely often though we don't really need to state absolute value of this because this is going to be infinitely often a what's it called a prime so it's a positive integer so we can just say the absolute value of this is going to equal this infinitely often so now can you pause for you know, 20 minutes and see how do you push the problem further and how do you maybe end the problem here pause now and here's the next step so now if two polynomials are the same infinitely many times then they are identical how do we prove this say you have p of x is equal to q of x for some other polynomials p and q for infinitely many x then if you look at a polynomial r of x is equal to p of x minus q of x it, it has infinitely many zeros which means it's a constant and it means because this is zero infinitely times it means this is zero that's a constant zero polynomial and then that gives you p of x is equal to q of x but it was very cool like this if you can you know have these conclusions now we have p of x is equal to we have p of x is equal to p of x plus p of x infinitely often or it's equal to the other one infinitely often but in both cases this means that these polynomials are the same which means that their degree is the same now the degree of if the degree of p of x is equal to if the degree of p of x is equal to some k we know that the degree of p of x plus p of x is going to be equal to k squared and how can you, how how can i maybe show this to you is like say that p of x is equal to you actually i think in most contests like at a high level if especially the IMO you wouldn't need to actually prove this but maybe at some introductory contest you would so here if p of x is equal to from i to k x to the power of i a i then if you have p of x plus p of x p of this is going to equal to instead of x it's going to be x plus the sum from x let's do this j let's make all of this i a j from j equals zero till k a i from equals zero till k and then you see like the biggest term here is going to be when i is k and when j is k here right we're going to have x to the j to the k to the k we're going to have x to the k squared these two terms need to be equal so the degrees of these polynomials that means the degree of this one is k squared now if the polynomials are equal that means that degree of k squared and degree of k they are the same another thing you could say wait what if the what if the constant term near x to the k squared is zero and that's a very good find i must say but that will not happen because that only appears once it appears that uh it's going to be a k squared the way i've put it up it's going to be a k squared that's going to be the constant term and you're assuming sort of that it's not zero here either like then the degree wouldn't be k it would be something less than k right so we have the degree here is k squared and the degree here is k and these k and k squared must be equal to which means that the degree of the polynomial p is either equal to one or zero and now we have two cases if the degree is zero then we have that the polynomial is in fact a constant and if it's a constant then it's equal to any prime number so any p of x equal to p for some prime p works out it satisfies the conditions of the problems that's one of the polynomials and if the degree is one then we have p of x is going to be equal to ax plus b right and now for some a and b and we know that either this or the negative of this is true so if this is true we will have ax plus b that's going to be p of x is equal to a of actually it's going to be a times 
ax plus b plus b, right? Case one is that these two things are equal. And then what is this? This is ax plus b is equal to a squared x plus ab plus b. And here what we have in this case, we need the things near x to be equal. That means a squared x is equal to ax. And here, because a is non-zero, if it's at degree one, a is non-zero. So this implies a is equal to one. And then we have, we need to have b plus this thing. This is b is equal to b plus b, if I'm not mistaken. And then b is equal to zero is a solution. So the polynomial seems to be p of x equals x. And then, wait a second, this doesn't feel quite right. Then p of, oh, I made a mistake. It's not ax plus b, it's ax plus x plus b. And then here there's a plus x, so there's an a squared plus ax. But then a squared x isn't zero. Let me just double check, and here is the actual good math. And here the math actually tells us that a squared is a squared x is needs to be zero. So that means a is zero. So this is not a solution. So we will have the other case, which is p of x is equal to p of x is going to be equal to the negative p of x plus p of x, which in our case tells us that ax plus b is going to be equal to, we're going to have a negative of a of x plus p of x plus b, and this is going to be negative a of x, then this is plus ax plus b, and then everything here plus b, and then here we're going to, have, when I put it here, we're going to have this, and then this is equal to negative a plus 1 times ax plus b, and then we're going to have from here, this is equal to this for all x, so we can cancel them out. And we're going to have negative a plus 1 is equal to 0. In other words, a is going to equal negative 1. Actually, negative a plus 1 is going to equal 1. My bad. And then this means that a is going to be equal to negative 2. And then b can be any constant. Yeah, then b can be any constant. So from here we'll have that a polynomial needs to be of the form p of x minus 2x plus b. And then p of p of x will be equal to minus 2x plus b as well. Because we'll have p of x, p of p of x plus p of x is going to equal p of b minus x and then when I put that in here this is going to be equal to right because the b stays the minus 2x and the x get away and we have p of b of x of b minus x is going to be equal to 2 times x minus b plus b which is going to be 2x minus b so as long as b is yeah, as long as b is odd now, this is going to cover infinitely many primes for infinitely many x. Yeah, so b only needs to be odd, and then it's all polynomials of this form will satisfy this. So any polynomial where p of x is any constant polynomial where p of x is a prime number, and any polynomial of the form 2x minus b, where b is an odd integer, so that it covers all the so that it covers primes, so that this thing actually covers primes, are going to satisfy the problem statement. This finishes up our nice functional equation problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.